kids have a smartphone, are you concerned about how their phone use could be affecting them? A recent article published in Live Science has a lot of families concerned about how smartphones could be affecting children and the quality of their sleep. Joining us in this discussion is Sandra Youssef and Dr. Nakua. Let's welcome our guests. Hello, Dr. Nakua and Sandra. Thank you very much for joining us to discuss this important topic. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much for having us. Sandra, let's start with you. Tell us about your experiences with children and their overuse of cell phones. Yes, so I have four children, the youngest being 10 and the oldest being 20, and they use their phones at night all the time. At first, I didn't think there was a problem with it, but lately they've been getting poor grades in school and they're always tired. I honestly don't know. Is it because they overuse their smartphones? When I talk to my friends with children, they all have the same problem too. Thank you for sharing, Sandra. Dr. Nakua, before we delve into how smartphones can affect sleep, do a lot of kids these days actually use their cell phones before bed? And how big of a problem is this really? It's actually a pretty big problem. So there was a recent large-scale review that looked at children ages 6 to 19 um, in Australia, Europe, North America, and Asia. And they found that 72% of children have smartphones and 89% of adolescents have smartphones. And most of these individuals actually use um, their phones during what should be bedtime. Mm -hmm. And the problem with this is that it affects sleep duration and it also affects the quality of their sleep. So my children are tired all the time, so I was wondering how smartphone use before bed affects you. Essentially, when you use your smartphone before bed, your brain is receiving a constant stream of light from the phone. And this basically tells your brain to stay awake. Because the light from the phone actually suppresses the hormone melatonin, which is normally involved in um, sort of getting your body ready for sleep. The high energy from short wavelength light, which is present in phone screens and alternatively called blue light, disrupts this um, by preventing your body from getting to the required state of sleep. One study by Mortadavi et al. had students go to bed at 11 p.m. and use their mobile phones for one hour after they sort of initiated going to bed. And this was done for three nights. During the first night, there was no filter to block out the blue light. But during the second and the third night, there was a filter to block out the blue light. Um, and what they did was they had the participants actually record their sleep um, delay after that hour of using their phones. And they found that when they did not have the filter, they actually had a longer sleep delay period. And this tells us that when using your phone, during bedtime hours and that continuous suppression of melatonin, it results in um, the lack of ability to actually fall asleep and it reduces the quality of sleep. So normally darkness would lead to the release of melatonin, but the light from your screen stops that? Exactly, that's a very good way to think about it. Um, secondly, another really important um, part of this is Sleep is important for our brains, and a lot of people know that. But it's also important for our support cells in the brain, and these are called glial cells. They clean up the toxins um, within our brains. And what happens is that um, children who have smartphones often get five to six hours of sleep, if that. Often the sleep is actually interrupted because the notifications from their phones sometimes wake them up if their phone is beside them. Um, and this is not provide for a very high quality of sleep. Normally, these children should be getting seven to nine hours of sleep completely undisturbed and interrupted. So what happens is that these toxins are actually not getting cleaned up by the glial cells because the glial cells are not being rejuvenated enough through the sleep. So how would that affect you the next day? It can impact your mood, your memory, your attention span, your problem solving abil ability, and even your metabolism. Wow, no wonder my children's grades have been dropping so much. So one thing I heard is that technology use can elevate cortisol levels in your body, which then leads to poorer sleep. Is that true? Yes, that is accurate. Um, so it has been reported that there is a link between technology and elevated levels of cortisol. And cortisol is a hormone in the body that often responds to stress. Technology use has a very similar effect. So although we may not see that technology stresses us out, 
it still results in an elevated cortisol level. You see, um, cortisol increases and decreases throughout the day. In the morning, normally there's higher levels of cortisol and this sort of initiates the waking up process. Gradually throughout the day, there's a decrease of cortisol and this allows your body to start getting into that sleep mode. When you're constantly using technology and that cortisol is being elevated without a way to shut it down, it's very hard for your body to suddenly get in that sleep mode or that sleep zone that it should be in naturally. So a study conducted by Born et al actually found that when individuals were injected with cortisol, they had longer periods of light sleep. The fact that cortisol increases light sleep means that those individuals actually have lower sleep quality because they have less time in deep sleep. So Dr. Nakua, do you have any recommendations for families that are concerned about these effects on their children? What can we do to best address this issue? Definitely. So I always recommend that parents have a strict no phone time. Having at least 30 minutes of no phone transition time um, right before they sleep will actually help both the parents and the children get better sleep. That is a great idea, Dr. Nikua. Thank you so much. I'll definitely try that out. And thank you for watching Demystifying Medicine Newsroom. Here's our takeaway points for today. Number one, phone use before bed can disrupt the natural sleep cycle by reducing the amount of sleep and the quality of sleep we get. Number two, it doesn't allow our brain to clear out toxins from the system. And number three, it can increase the levels of the stress hormone cortisol in the body. Therefore, try to limit phone use at least 30 minutes before bed and keep the bedroom electronics free if you can. Thank you to our guests for joining us today and thank you again for watching.